In this week's Money Monday, we're talking all about the stock market. Here with more is David Seeger from Great Lakes Credit Union. David, thank you so much for joining us once again. And, you know, the stock market can be a little tricky and at times very confusing. What are some simple steps if you're in the introductory phase? Well, first of all, we should probably define what the stock market is. A lot of times they call it the equities market. Equities means you own part of something. When you own a stock in a company, you own part of that company. So um, the stock market is basically a, a place where people come and they trade stocks. And th the price and the price can be relatively price of stocks can be relatively volatile. And when they're volatile, that creates some investment risk as well. Um, there are some ways you can mitigate that in terms of trying to get an idea of what a value of, of a stock is in relationship to the rest of the market. Okay, so. You broke that down in very simple terms. Where does it get a little tricky? It gets a little more tricky when it comes to determining an individual stock. What is the actual price value of that stock? We know the market value, but how is that stock performing in relationship to that market value? And that's where we uh, sort of got to, we have to do the math when we talk we about do dividends. The math. And exactly. So, uh, but when we're talking about math, it's very simple. So. Uh, Explain what a dividend is. A dividend is a rate of return on a stock. It's kind of like interest that you get at the bank in your bank account. Uh, so this is a rate of return that you get on a, a stock that you have. And the stock actually, the price of a stock is, uh, the price is driven by two things. One, speculation in the market. And then secondly, by the dividend that is produced by that particular stock. If a company makes more money, they're able to pay a greater dividend, which pushes the price of the stock up. Okay, what are the risks and rewards uh, when it comes to the stock market? And when should you sort of pull in and pull out? When, when should you know? Timing the market is always very difficult. A matter of fact, it is doubtful that you can actually uh, time the market in any way that you can really make it, uh, make it work for you as an investor. A lot of people do dollar income averaging. So what they do is this. They put um, a, a, a specified amount of money in periodically in the market. So they will buy the highs and the lows both at the same time. Theoretically, you should be hitting more highs than lows because that's how the market has worked over, the, over the, uh, the, the years. So dollar income cost averaging is probably the way to go. Now, for a person who is introductory to this uh, stock market, um, what are some key things that they should know when investing and, and trying to make some money out of this? Well, if you were going to buy a stock in the stock market, mm -hmm. I would go with something that you understand, a company that you understand. Um, there's a variety of them out there, like Apple, for example. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with that because of the, the phones and the iPads and the computers and things of that nature. Or Google, or something to that effect. People understand that because, well, right. that's a search engine, so they understand that. So buy something you understand. That's really important. Okay, and when we come back, speaking of understanding, not everyone is good at math, but we will break down in terms of how to uh, figure out and calculate uh, how much a stock is actually worth. We'll talk more about those dividends coming up in just a little bit. We are continuing to talk all about the stock market. Joining us again, David Seeger from Great Lakes Credit Union, Union, if I can say that. But good you morning. know what? Uh, good morning. And it's been interesting talking about the stock market because a lot of people get confused so easily by it but there's a little bit of math involved into figuring out the value, and it's very simple. It's not really that complicated. No, it's not. Uh, you can make it as complicated as you want, but fundamentally, you can do a, an evaluation on a stock price um, by looking at something called the Gordon Dividend uh, Evaluation Method. And what it is basically is this. You look at the stock in terms of what the dividend is being paid at that stock, and then you look at the market sector, what is the average rate of return for that market sector, and kind of compare the two together and come up with some numbers. Let's give you an example. Let's say a, a, a share of stock is priced at $35 in the market. And is that a good price? Is that a, is that a bad price? Don't know. Went through some math on this. Okay, let's say the dividend is 50 cents a quarter. So now to analyze it, we have to multiply the 50 cents times four, and that's $2. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let me look at the market sector. There's different sectors in the market. For example, there's a technology sector, there's a manufacturing sector, a financial sector, a retail sector, and so on. So let's find out, and you can find out this information about market sector's returns, like on Yahoo Finance, for example, or on CNBC on our website, or um, Bloomberg. There's a number of places to go. So let's say for our example here that the uh, market sector return on average is 5%. So remember the $2 we talked about in terms of an annualized dividend? Okay. Divide that by the 5% and you get $40. It, 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 that would indicate that this particular stock has a potential return of $40 and is um, um, 
acting as if the, the price is performing at a $40 level. The actual price of the stock is $35. So we said that at the very beginning. Mm -hmm. So this stock is slightly undervalued. A collection of these type of stocks are called value stocks. So it's slightly undervalued. So at least from the perspective of dividend performance, this stock is slightly undervalued. So that's the math to it, and that's how you can use this as one methodology, not the only methodology, to try to determine what the evaluation of a stock price could and should be. Is this the simplest form? Simplest form as it gets. Okay, so you're looking at the dividends and then the sector. And that's- That is correct. That's pretty much it. That is it. Okay, it sounds as easy as algebra, or actually easier than algebra, it's it's like than basic algebra. math. So basic math. One plus one equals two. You're right. Um, for more information in terms of if, if this does get a little bit more confusing, you mentioned Yahoo Finance, and what in particular does that website offer that folks can look at? It offers all kinds of things. It's very user friendly. It offers um, stock prices, histories of, of, of stock where they've been over the past year, uh, dividends, um, also um, uh, the uh, uh, return on investment for the different market sectors. It's all on there. It's very concise, very user friendly. Okay, now you mentioned if it is um, the, the value of the actual stock. What if it's under value? What should you do at that point? Well, okay, let's say, it, well, right now, this example, $35 is, is undervalued um, and was performing at a $40 level. So that would be a potential good buy. There's other things to consider, but at least from that consideration, it's a potential good buy as a value stock. All right, David Seeger, thank you so much for joining us. Thank a you. little lesson on, on the stock market. I learned some things that I didn't know this morning, so we appreciate you stopping by for this week's Money Monday. Again, David Seeger from Great Lakes Credit Unit.